while it is uh, 16 hours and 43 minutes into the 24th day of April 2021, I am not too sure exactly when I started vlogging today. If I have a have at all in the in the in the 24 hour period of uh, April 24th. <laughs> Remember, my day isn't on uh, is isn't August 24th. It's all month long. All week long, all you know, there isn't an end to the day. There isn't isn't really a beginning to the day. It's a sort of uh, I go through a checklist of of stuff, and when I get tired and uh, or something, I need to sort of think about things for a bit, uh, mull things over my mind. I go to sleep and allow uh, my work to go continue on in my dreams, where I do mull things over. I do uh, I. Oh. Get to experience some of uh, the things I'm thinking about. The dreams do provide you with a degree of experience that um, you wouldn't ordinarily have. It's sort of, you know, is life with a do-over. <laughs> in other words, even if the the end result in terms of the dream itself is end, ends up being fatal where you die, if you're aware that it's a dream, then you could... You, what, you just simply go on to the next one and you try again on whatever whatever is presented to you. In other words, you get to try different things out, including being other people or other things. Uh, you see from other perspectives. And the question is, when something is presented to you, a situation is presented to you, how do you deal with it? What, what is your reaction to things? And there's always there's always a, a learning a learning curve, uh, particularly when you're entering new territory where where you're experiencing things that are new that you haven't done before. Uh, there is always that learning curve that uh, kind of throws you. It just sort of you really don't know what to do next, and so you just try this out, you try that out, and so what happens is that understanding this is the way the dreams work is if I'm stuck on a particular idea, and like it took me, I could just publish something to uh, my core IT house to deal with uh, a lot of the, the social issues that are going on, and I was uh, of moving everything off onto a, a gaming site I have on into Instagram called QLARP, and it's nerd gaming, nerd, nerds, and part of nerd gaming is nerds love to study, they like the research, this, this is part of who they are. And it doesn't matter what the game is, every nerd game is very complex, there's a lot of studying involved, uh, you have to do a lot of thinking. So I moved uh, a large chunk of the issues that are present today and often to QLARP, where you're playing a uh, sort of a James Bond type of character, uh, that's GCHQ, that's the QLARP is actually GCHQ, uh, the head of intelligence. And your goal is to be the white hat. The goal is to be to fight evil with knowledge and wisdom. So, in other words, you're not taking a violent approach to establishment violence or establishment oppression. You want to don't you? You really can't create anarchy because anarchy always devolves into warlords. It, the, it 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 never brings you freedom that you think it's going to bring you. So there's a there is a need for a balance, a way to sort of to to release the grip of oppression without throwing the world into a further state of chaos where you would actually have. A, a warlord situation where you're now having warring factions and fighting all over the earth. This is what happened Ugh. in history. Is that you go back and look in history, you look at the age of the, the age of empire. A large chunk of uh, the Renaissance fair is based on this whole fantasy of how wonderful the the Middle Ages were, and they weren't because every so every few years you had a different army creeping through your territory and killing people. So what happens is that you were always you were always in a position of starvation. You were always, you know, the the the, the, the 
the pleasantries that you see at the, at the at any Renaissance fair wasn't really there. It was actually rather something gruesome uh, that people had to survive through, and, and, and we're simply not aware or, or even have any degree of understanding of what people have suffered in the past. I think this is a large chunk of the issue today. Is you know, is that we aren't aware of these different things, and we think that the the fantasies that we've sort of created for ourselves about what the past was uh, is something very dangerous because we're trying to achieve things that are basically in fantasy when the reality comes through, through when you're living in this sort of world of chaos, uh, doesn't necessarily work out the way you hope it would work out. And so the question is, is how do you find that right balance? How do you achieve that balance? And this is sort of the game of QLAP. This is the scenario that you're operating under QLAP. Again, it doesn't, you can't put this in a, a one minute, uh, soundbite. You can't do it in 60 seconds. It has to be done over a period of, of days and weeks. Because people just don't pick up on things that quickly. So you have to sort of feed it out uh, uh, in a paced manner. Rather than, simply th rather than simply throwing it out there and allowing people to read this one large manual. So a large chunk of the work that I have in terms of my research uh, into... Uh, to the psychology of the world, the global psychology, uh, and this is b about human behavior, will have to be sort of parceled out on Instagram and to TikTok, and then uh, I have something for WordPress uh, that will sort of expand the game as well and give it an open platform. That, it, that it, in other words, being instead of being stuck within a server playing a role-playing game, this brings the entire internet into the role-playing world. And so this was what called, well, this is why you call it a LARP, because it's live-action role-play, but you're not, you're, you're still within the virtual environment. So, uh, another approach to, uh, to, uh, LARP or live-action role-play. But I said, these things take time. These are things that you sort of have to work through, ideas you have to work through. And sometimes you have the right ideas, and sometimes you don't have the right ideas. And then once you have the idea, let's say you have the right idea, how do you present it? What do you, you know, it took me, what I just now posted, it took me a month and a half to sort of figure I had it. I knew what I was talking about, I knew I wanted, what I kind of wanted to represent, but I didn't know how to put it in that 60 second sound button and have it be effective. So it took me a month and a half to put that one thing out. <laughs> so. But that's kind of the way things go. This is, this is the nature of things. So anyways, day by day, week by week, and uh, month by month, and uh, year by year. on a night ride uh, coming back from my parents' house. But anyways, typically as I start to ride, the, uh, the feeling subsides. The editing of those logs is going very well. I am now, well... This is about 24, 25 days out from being current, so I'm within the 30 day mark. So we'll see how that ends up going up, going up, uh, coming out. Ugh. As I said, there's not always a lot to talk about on the vlogs. I mean, there's certain things you can talk about, but other things you can't talk about. And so that may 
makes it uh, difficult to have a conversation when uh, the conversation is kind of, uh, you know, skewed. You know, you can talk about certain things, but you can't talk about that thing and, and the other thing, and, uh, you know, on and on and on. I mean, how do you have an open discussion, because uh, this is what uh, Alison Stoner was saying on Instagram, that you have to have an open conversation about race. Well, how do you, how do you have an open conversation when one side is gagged? Well, you can't. Basically, the way it works is you can have a conversation with the people as long as uh, you agree with the uh, liberal side of the philosophy. Otherwise, you can't have any conversation at all. Because the other side will get upset and they'll start beating you up. And of course, they're just, uh, justified because your views are views of hatred from their perspective. And, uh, well... Those are the kind of things they just don't tolerate. I have to come out further. Using Pleasant View as our uh, point. Okay, good. Our left turns are definitely getting better here. The right turns aren't so good because of the massive groove in the road. It kind of throws off the balance and uh, is uh, quite dangerous. So uh, I end up using uh, uh, Van Horn to Clipper as the alternative to the uh, Pleasant View. So that's kind of how things are going to be done. Oh. Light will turn green soon. Good yeah. green light. And we're on our way. At about 35 kilometers an hour. I don't think I'm going to go much faster than this. Uh, the fatigue is kind of hitting me. It's still here, but it's... Uh, so that means a slower ride. Not much slower, but in the, in the time doesn't really sort of... Uh, uh, it's not impacting significantly. I had to think of the word there for a minute. There. The solar activity is uh, up again, so it's warming up. And she warmed for the next couple of days because the amount of activity, solar activity that sort of popped up is uh, significant enough for the last couple of days. We made a bit of a mistake. Oops. Connect it, correct it. Next light. Switching pockets and didn't realize the light had changed. So, uh, the way for the next lights is uh, that I get uh, to do that to make a change. Now we're doing 41 kilometers an hour. It's got a good speed, good pickup. I do enjoy the scooter rides. The scooter rides get me outside. It's uh, fresh air. The guys, the guys are whining. 
either misaimed or if he's using his high beams. Staying in the 40 kilometer range. I really don't want to go any faster than this. But the thing is, what's so cool is that I'm barely touching the accelerator and I'm maintaining the, the, the 40 kilometer an hour. Uh, uh, so I, I know it has a bit of a cruise, uh, a cruise control on here, but the thing is, is that uh, I didn't necessarily expect it to be this good. I'm going to work and see if I can edit the vlogs so they become uh, current within two weeks. Put it two weeks out. Some guy crossing the street. It's hard to notice people crossing the street when they're all dark like that. And a lot of times you don't realize, you know, particularly if people are, walk, uh, are crossing with headphones on, you don't notice them coming. So an accident waiting to happen. Well, we are in the home stretch. These last lights will be it, and then we'll be into the uh, uh, side seat of Telson. There's the lights after this, it's IBM driveway. Let's see how I have a light here. Am I going to make it or am I not going to make it? It looks like I'm just double digits here in terms of seconds. So it looks like I'll make it. We're all right. Yeah. 15 seconds left to go. And we're across the... Uh, so we're now we're heading in the home stretch now. Heading up to Toya Park. Uh, this is IBM's driveway coming up. Here. 